PNW Erica Hare, licensed realtor in the state of Washington with Remax Equity Group, specializing in Southwest Washington, primarily Clark County. This video is a deeper dive into a house that I posted to my Instagram feed on Tuesday for Timeless Treasures Tuesday. Originally, this house had an offer review date of April 5th. However, it is still an active listing and they have an open house on Saturday. I'm excited to take a deeper look at this house and share some of my suggestions for restoring it to its former mid-century glory. This house is a two bedroom, two full bath, one partial bath home with 2,573 square feet. Now, this property is unique in that it has a main living area and then there's a larger space above the garage. The list price is $649.9 and it's on 0.23 acres in the popular Lincoln neighborhood. Now, this neighborhood is adorable. It's full of mid-century homes, so I'm really excited to explore this one a little bit further. So we're looking now at the front of the house. It's got some brick here. Um, looks like possibly board and batten for part of the siding. Uh, over to the right is the garage, and then you can see this little kind of dormer window here. That is where the additional living area is, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, totally little mid-century feel here. All right, so here's another picture of the front elevation of the house. So over on the left is where you walk up, and then you can see how the garage is uh, kind of down a hill a little bit, and then over here off to the right is where that additional living space is. Okay, so this house, in my opinion, is an absolute showstopper. It is gorgeous. So let's look at these beautiful wood details. First of all, we've got some built-ins here and in the built-ins you can see this little cutout there. So that is a planter. I absolutely adore this feature and it's on a lot of mid-century homes. We've got a bookcase over to the right. Over to the left is a wall mounted unit and I've seen some of these go at furniture uh, refurbishing places that specialize in mid-century furniture for $1,500 to $2,000 for units similar to this one. So whoever buys this house, please, this house is meant for you to embrace the mid-century features here. Um, don't paint over them white either. Beautiful exposed woodwork on the ceiling here and this rock fireplace here and it's got another little interesting feature which we'll get to a little bit later but everything about this is stunning um, with the exception of the carpet. So I am a purist. This was not the original carpet and the house was built in the 50s and I don't think I said the date. So this was built in 1955. So it's highly likely that there is hardwood underneath this carpet. And that's because uh, prior to the early 1960s, it was more economically affordable for the builder to put in hardwood rather than carpet. In the 60s, advances in manufacturing of carpet uh, became more widespread. So it, then at that point, it became affordable to put carpet in your home. But prior to that, hardwood was actually more affordable. Now, as we know, carpet is such mass produced and they've got the machinery dialed in and it's absolutely cheaper to put in carpet, but there was a time where this was not so. I can see a cable here on the left, so that's probably where they may have had the TV on this stand here, but all of these features that are included in the home are just, they're stunning. So here's the entryway for the home here. So, you walk in the door here. Uh, this is a cutout here, so it's not a mirror. Over here, where I'm circling with my cursor, that is a mirror. And look at this beautiful mid-century scallop detail here. Like, this is amazing. The other thing that I really appreciate about this woodwork is that it's two-toned. So this is either a result of using two different types of wood or two different colors of stain. Uh, I am not an expert in woodworking by any means, but I would suspect that this is two different types of wood here, kind of lining the around the doors and the cupboards um, and the doors themselves. 
wonderful antique brass hardware here. So you walk in the home and off to the right through this cutout, now you would put a planter here, a planter box. Through there, this is the kitchen. So we'll show some more pictures of the kitchen later. And then also to the right will be the master bedroom. So we'll see that a little bit more later, but these cabinets and built-ins are just, they're stunning. So here's this wall mounted unit here. Uh, absolutely stunning mid-century wall mounted unit here. What's along the bottom here is baseboard heat. So the home has baseboard heat. Some of, one of the rooms I think has a ductless uh, AC unit, which we'll get to that in a minute, but look at this. It's just so gorgeous. So the carpet, as I mentioned, is a little bit rough. And one of the things that we'll see on this house is that there almost isn't a place where there isn't carpet. These are some beautiful built-ins and I'm absolutely a fan of the built-in buffet and look at all of this beautiful storage space here. We can see a little peekaboo view of the kitchen also, which we'll explore in a minute, but let's just appreciate this amazing built-in buffet, china cabinet, hutch, etc. This is just great. Another view kind of showing the layout of the house. So here's the entryway where you walk in. There's a master bedroom over here off to the right in the view. And then here is the kitchen. So this is kind of, I suppose, a dining area. We've got this really amazing fixture here. And the fixture looks like it's copper, which is gonna tie in with the built-in rotisserie, which we'll get to in a second. So here we are with this lovely stonework fireplace. I absolutely love this stonework. Please don't paint over it white. Please, please, please. The thing is, is that when you see these homes that have been this way since 1955, it truly is a shame to paint over all of this. Uh, at this point, this is well over 50, 60 plus years old. Um, and you know, I, I get it that people want to modify the house to them. However, uh, at this point, it's a better investment for you if you leave everything the way that it is. And this is because things like this are becoming a rarity and buyers do appreciate these charming mid-century details. We can see a little bit of a view of the copper rotisserie, you know, in your living room, because that's what they did back then. Another shot of the dining room area outside of the kitchen. Uh, Built-ins here, we've talked about those already, but this light fixture is amazing. I mean, this house is such a treat. All right, here we are. Here's what we all came here for, right? The copper hooded rotisserie. All right, I bet this still works. I can see a plug for it. It's got a plug here, right there. Uh, this little area here is where you'd feed in your chips, okay? The bottom is where you'd clean them out. This is amazing. Like, this just, it, it blows my mind that it's intact, that it's still here, that the beautiful copper is still here. Like, this is amazing. So, in the 50s, entertaining was huge and also kind of into the mid-century movement, kind of more bringing the outdoors in. So this was a way for you to, you know, kind of have a barbecue inside your house. And it has its own vent here, so the fumes really shouldn't be a problem. Like, this is such a cool feature, and I hope whoever purchases this house absolutely appreciates this. So this is the backside of the fireplace. Oh, you can see the um, how the carpet is pulled up a little bit, these waves here. So if you had carpet that was in good shape, all you would need to do would be to have somebody come and pull the carpet, retack it down, trim the extra. But in this case, the carpet, I think, absolutely needs to be replaced. So while we're on that subject here, uh, here's something that I think 
would be an absolute great replacement choice. So I've mentioned this flooring before in my vinyl sheet flooring video, but this is the IVC modus pattern. And what I love about it is it really has that mid-century terrazzo look going for it. It comes in three colorways here. We've got the grayer one, which I wouldn't recommend. And we've got this kind of putty color. So let's let this refresh. Okay, so that one's a little bit darker. And the one that I like the best is this colorway right here. So it's colorway 536. Um, although that has some blue in it. So maybe let's go back to this one. Yeah, okay, 585. All right, so it's got warm tones to it. So this vinyl sheet flooring here would look absolutely stunning in this space. Okay, do you see that? So that space, that flooring. Okay, so, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this video is I wanted to offer suggestions for anybody watching this video. So not necessarily the person who's gonna be buying this house, because it's pretty rare that I would actually be able to, you know, capture them uh, in this video, but, I, I just wanted to give some suggestions for those people who are looking to do a retro renovation, so a era appropriate renovation to the house that they buy and to just give some resources. Let's continue exploring this amazing home. So here is a brick enclosed patio slash sunroom here. I believe they're calling it a sunroom in the listing. They are, um, but just, you know, another another living space essentially because it's all closed in. So you've got a fireplace. So in the winter time, it can keep you warm, but a really cool uh, extra living space here. Kitchen. Beautiful brick here. Pink laminate countertops and backsplash. White wood cabinets. So these weren't white at the original time of, uh, of manufacture here. They would have been wood. Um, I do enjoy the pink and white combination. And I will say something. Uh, when people buy older homes, a lot of times they initially are like kitchen remodel, kitchen reno, etc. But what I want you to know is that older homes typically have cabinets made out of actual wood. New cabinets typically are made of MDF, which is medium density fiberboard because wood cabinets are very cost prohibitive. So a lot of times people think like, oh, I'm just gonna gut this kitchen, rip out all these icky cabinets, etc." But think about that because a lot of vintage homes have real wood cabinets, which are gonna last you a whole heck of a lot longer than an MDF cabinet will. So MDF cabinets are, susceptible to when the outer lamination or paint layer starts to chip off and if it gets wet, it tends to expand. A wood cabinet will not do that to you. So these cabinets here are beautiful, solid wood. Here is a fun one. So if you are a vintage aficionado, you will know that a lot of vintage kitchens had a washer and dryer in the kitchen. And this one is no exception. We can see right here, the dryer vent. So there was a clothes dryer here and a clothes washer right here. A lot of people eventually relocate them to another room. Um, but when this house was built, that was the way that it was done. All of your appliances were in one room and that was the kitchen. My renovation ideas for this kitchen. I can see here at the bottom that some is, of the paint is chipped off here uh, and you want to get that repainted so that the wood doesn't deteriorate. Um, it's not going to deteriorate anything like MDF will, but you know, with time and without the protection of paint, it can start to deteriorate. So I would either take all the paint off, which is an arduous process, restain and refinish or just repaint them white. So in this case, I think probably the best option maybe is to repaint them a color 
And let's talk about this laminate backsplash here. So it's kind of a pink color and I am all for laminate countertops. So they're durable, um, they wear well, they're relatively inexpensive. You can get them in magnificent colors. So in the case of this kitchen, if this was gonna be my kitchen, I would paint the cabinets whatever color I chose. But if you wanted to stick with the pink laminate countertop, so these countertops most likely need to be replaced. Um, older laminates are not as durable as current laminates. So these probably have scuff marks on them. They did not handle heat as well as laminates do now. So laminates today, you can put a hot pan on and it's not gonna melt the top layer of plastic off. It's not gonna scald, it's not gonna leave a mark. My guess is that these cabinets, sorry, these countertops have some marks. So what can we do? All right, so let's go over to the Formica website here. So Formica is just one brand of laminate manufacturer. There are several out there, but I just did a quick search for pink for Formica and I see this just rose color. And to me, that color is a pretty good match for what's in there right now. So a re good replacement laminate countertop here would be Just Rose by Formica. This is not the original kitchen floor. The original kitchen floor was likely a linoleum. So you could take that IVC flooring that I recommended earlier and you could even bring it all the way uh, into the kitchen. So cute. I love the little scallop details above the windows. And these look like original wood windows. They really do. Oh yes. And you can see the original like to open and close it. <clears throat> okay, here's another uh, segue. A lot of people hate on original windows. You just need to get them restored. There's people who will restore original wood windows and they will make them as energy efficient as they can. You don't need to replace them. You don't need to rip everything out and put in vinyl. You just, you just don't. These windows have lasted for dozens and dozens and dozens of years. Very cool mirrored doors here in what I think is the master bedroom. Yeah, so we can see this is the entryway here with the mirror. So if you walk in the house, off to the left is your master and the right is the kitchen and the living area. Really awesome windows. Master. Oh, oh, I can see a little peeky peek of the master bath. Uh, there's also carpet in the master bath. Closet. Pretty big closet for 55, I gotta say. The bathroom. All right, I just wanna show everybody that it's carpeted. I don't recommend that, like, ever. Uh, <laughs> but there's a lot to talk about here in this bathroom. We've got mint green tile and a pink sink. That sink is absolutely original. You can see the metal ring around it here. This countertop is possibly original or possibly it's been replaced. It could have been pink at one point in its life. Let's see what else the bathroom holds for us. A pink tub, oh yeah. So I can almost guarantee you that the toilet was pink at one point in time too, but that it's been replaced. <clears throat> so here's a fun little resource that I'd like to share in regards to vintage bathrooms. BMW Tile is a tile manufacturer based out of Gardena, California that specializes in vintage recreation tiles. On their website, you can see um, the products that they offer. And then as we scroll through, we can see the bathrooms that they, we can see bathrooms that have used their products. So. These are all new tile installations. They look vintage, but these are new. So they even sell the liner tiles here, which is this kind of little decorative border. If you are interested in purchasing a home that has a fabulous vintage bathroom like so, 
I think it would be fantastic if you reached out to B&W Tile for color match and you could add on to the tile that is already existing. So if we go back over here, all right, you could even tile in this top vanity here. We could add some over to the, we could add some on the side of the toilet. Uh, definitely lean into the vintage bathroom, okay? There's no need to rip any of this out and do something different. If you're buying a vintage home, I hope that you love your vintage home. And this home is so unique in that it has so many preserved features. Why don't you just lean into it and just go all the way, like tile that vintage bathroom. So this home is only two bedrooms in the main living area. And here's the second one. It's got an attached bathroom too. So it's kind of almost like two masters. This bathroom I'm not as excited about. I don't think that this is the original tile. So this looks like it was updated at some point. This tub absolutely looks original to me. This tile here um, does not, but I mean, it's still kind of cool and, and funky, but I mean, wouldn't it be like really fun if you just kind of like leaned into this and did something like that with it? And I, I only bring this up because there's so many people who buy vintage homes and I'm like, we don't know what to do. We don't think we can get replacement tile. Like you absolutely can reach out to B&W Tile. So here is that extra living space that's above the garage. Uh, it's got some, looks like faux wood paneling or like veneer wood paneling. This honestly isn't my favorite. Uh, this looks very kind of, I don't know, it's got like a 70s vibe here. Um, cute little vintage, you know, stove over there in the corner. This carpet just is like cheap industrial to me. Uh, so I would replace that. Baseboard heating again. So this is the space above the garage. Here is the garage with a cute little workbench area with those cute little wicker back chairs. There is a workshop and here it is. So if shop space is important to you. There's the back side of the house. Look at that cool little lantern fixture. Courtyard. Little barn shed. Look at that cute little uh, gambrel roof there. And a gazebo. Look at these cool windows. Oh, love them. And these like shades here that look to be aluminum. So great. Okay. Backside. So that's it. That's the home. Um, there's just one more thing that I want to touch on. Another thing that people can potentially stumble on is you move into your new house, you know that you need to paint the walls, but you're like, what color do I do? I guess I just do white. Let me tell you that there are several different shades of white. And what I would like to mention is that a home like this, it has a lot of warm tones in it. You want to get a creamy white. You do not want an optical white and you don't want a bluish white. So red and blue are opposites on the color wheel. So if you take all this warm wood and you put it next to an optical white, it's gonna make the wood look red and the walls look blue, if that makes any sense. So there's a couple of whites that I really like and anytime I'm looking at a white, I compare it to a true white. So these are bare swatches from Home Depot and this is ultra pure white. So this is white, white. Then I'm gonna pull over Polar Bear here, which is a warm white, and I'm gonna put it next to it. So if I was just to look at this on its own, you might think like, oh, that's white, that's white. But then when I put an actual bright white next to it, you can see a slight difference in color, okay? So see the creaminess of this one versus the more optical white of this one. So Polar Bear is a great creamy white. It still retains a lot of its white brightness, but 
it has just a hint of warmness that's not gonna look, you know, bad next to all of your warm wood. So if you wanna take it up a notch further with your creamy white, this is sleek white here, which is significantly warmer than the polar bear, which I just had up, okay? So I've got three up here, and you can see how you may have thought that the two on the ends were actually white white. When you have the swatch next to it, you can see the cast. So sleek white is here, which is a little bit more yellower, darker, creamy, and polar bear is over here. I've used sleek white before, and it actually does look pretty white on the wall. You wouldn't think that it wasn't white, but it just has a slight warm cast to it. And I'm gonna be using Polar Bear for our next project. So as you can see, there's a lot of details that go into planning out your space, but just a little bit of planning can help make your home look cohesive, which is gonna contribute to your sanity. And it's gonna look better when you go to resell it in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know that I rattled on and on and on, but if you like similar content, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, cheers.